Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the second lecture about ovarian disease, which is malignant disease of the ovary. Ovarian malignancy is the second more gynecological cancer after endometrial cancer. Poor survival rates. Why? Because of late presentation of disease. Most of them diagnosed in stage 3 or 4. Risk is about 1.4%. 80% ovarian cancer are epithelial origin or epithelial ovarian cancer. Mean age of presentation is 64 years old. Most common in developed countries. What about the etiology and risk factors? First of all, incident of uh, ovulation theory. What's the ovulation theory? This is mean continuous ovulation. What will cause? It will cause epithelial cell damage. This is the ovulation in the ovary. So when there is continuous ovulation in the uh, life of the female, there will be damage of the epithelium of the ovary, continuous damage of the epithelium. And when there is damage, and the cell epithelium, there will be cell division for healing of the tissue. This cell division is predisposing factor to tumor growth formation. Then, I mean, sorry, and the more cell division, more injury of the tissue, there will be abnormal cell division and abnormal development of tissue. So then decreased risk are those with decreased ovulation. Those women who has uh, or had history of decreased ovulation, they already have decreased risk of, of uh, ovarian tumor. Like during the pregnancy, any pregnancy, there will be decreased ovulation for nine months. Those using oral contraceptive pulse, those with the breastfeeding, breastfeeding will cause decrease in the ovulation or unovulation cycles. Well, increased risk in those with nullipara, no pregnancy, no breastfeeding, there will be more ovulation and more cell division and more risk for ovarian cancer. Early menarche and late menopause. So the female have uh, the female has a long period of ovulatory cycles. Second risk factor is self fertility treatment, especially when we used for prolonged time prolonged ovulation induction. Genetic factor, 10 to 15% of epithelial ovarian cancers are familial, hereditary, usually with serious adenocarcinoma, which is one type of epithelial ovarian tumor. What are the genetics factors? We have commonest gene mutation are called BORCA1 and BORCA2 genes. BORCA1 occur in 80% in while BORCA2 in 20%. Most commonly is BORCA1 gene mutation. When there is a mutation, the woman liable for developing uh, breast and ovarian cancer. This is usually autosomal dominant hereditary. Breast cancer risk in positive BORCA genes is about 80%, so it's very high breast cancer also can develop ovarian cancer. Another hereditary genetic is hereditary non-polypoidal uh, non colorectal cancer, which is called Lange syndrome. This is associated with endometrium cancer and 10% risk of ovarian cancer, as well as colorectal cancer. This is also hered hereditary. Management of women with family history, with positive family history of breast or ovarian tumor. This is depends on the woman's age, reproductive plans, and individual risk. Most of these families have history of ovarian, breast, or colon cancer. If one, just one, first degree affected, the risk will be just 5%. If two, first degree affected, like her mother or her sister, the risk 
will be 40%. Hereditary ovarian cancer occur 10 years before the sporadic one, so it will occur earlier. The most common hereditary cancer is the breast ovarian cancer syndrome, Burka gene, accounting for 90% of hereditary cancer. So, if suggestive hereditary ovarian tumor, يعني خنقول female عدها first degree affected, just uh, only one or two or more first degree affected. كانت تكون أخوتها وأمها عدهم risk factor, عدهم ovarian or breast cancer. Then, what we will do? We do BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes study for the family. Screening using transvaginal ultrasound and tumor marker like CA125 has not been shown to improve survival in women with familial predisposition to ovarian cancer. There will be no any rule for ovarian cancer screening. مو مثل breast cancer, مو مثل cervical cancer. هناك عندنا screening. كل سنة المريضة تسوي ممكن ماموغراف كل سنة ممكن تسوي باب سمير for cervical cancer. الأوفرين كانسر ما بي سكرينينج بول. Prophylactic bilateral salvingovorectomy has a role in women with positive gene mutation after completing family and after 45 years old. Although it doesn't eliminate the risk of primary peritoneal tumor. يعني هاي عندها risk factor hereditary risk factor ممكن أسوي لها البركاجين إذا طلع عندي بوزيتيف ممكن أسوي لها بايلاترال سانجو فراكتوم بروفيلاكتيك شلون يسوون بايلاترال ماستكتوم بروفيلاكتيك ممكن نسوي فراكتوم بايلاترال بروفيلاكتيك ليش؟ لأنه ممكن يكون عندنا 40% there is risk of ovarian cancer هاي شو وقت نسوي هذا كانت كومبليت فاميلي اولد ايج وومن other risk factors like endometriosis smoking intrauterine device and obesity. What about the staging of ovarian cancer? We have four stages. Depends on clinical and pathological assessment. Shona qasim the stage kehna atimit ala clinical and pathological. Pathology is very important for staging of ovarian cancer. We have four stages. Stage 1, about 25%, stage 2, 10%, 50% to stage 3, and 15% to stage 4. So, it's about 65% female presented with a stage 3 and more. Why high? Because of in insidious nature of sign and symptom of ovarian cancer. Diamond tegina is symptomatic. Diamond is symptomatic later on when there is metastasis of the ovarian cancer. What about the metastasis? Either direct separate to the peritoneum, omentum, and other organs, or lymphatic to the pelvic, inguinal, and paraortic lymph nodes. Stage one, the growth limited to the ovaries, to one or both ovaries, not outside the ovary. We have three. Stage 1a, the growth limited to one ovary, no external tumor, intact capsule of the ovary or tumor, and no ascites. Ihnana the tumor with intact capsule, not rupturing, no tumor outside the capsule of the ovary. And affected one ovary, this is stage 1a. Stage 1b, both ovaries affected. The same criteria, but both ovaries affected. This and this. Those are both lesions. With no external tumor, intact capsule of the tumor and the ovary, and no ascites. Stage 1C, either stage 1A or B, but tumor on the surface of the ovary, or with the capsule rupture of the tumor, or when we do washing or acidic fluid aspiration, there will be cancer cell positive. This is stage 1C. Stage two, uh, 2, the gro uh, <coughs> growth here limited to the pelvis. Outside the ovary, 
limited to the pelvis, not outside the pelvis. We have also three types. Stage 2a, extension or metastasis to the uterus or tubes. Now then, show ovarian tumor metastasis to the tubes or uterus. Stage 2b, extension to the other pelvic organ, to the pelvis, other pelvic organ, the metastasis. Stage 1c is stage, uh, stage 2c, sorry, <coughs> is, uh, <coughs> is stage 2a or stage 2b, but with positive washing or ascites fluid for malignant cell. Yeah, I mean, so washing of the peritoneum. أو نأخذ الأستيك فلود إذا there is a sepsis present طبعاً هذا يوم operation راح نلقى بيها cancer cell نسميها positive washing or ascites what are, what what is the stage three of ovarian cancer the growth limited to the abdominal peritoneum or retroperitoneal or inguinal lymph nodes Now, the growth limited to the peritoneal cavity or inguinal lymph nodes. Here are three types. Stage 3a, tumor grossly limited to the pelvis with negative nodes, no lymph nodes, but histologically confirmed abdominal peritoneal implant. احنا السابعة شوي راح ناخذها during surgery ايش راح ناخذ من سو surgery for ovarian tumor we will take biopsy from the lymph nodes retroperitoneal lymph nodes pelvic lymph nodes and biopsy from the peritoneum of the abdominal wall retroperitoneal or abdominal wall peritoneum also biopsy from the capsule of the liver and from the diaphragm if there is microscopical Confirmed metastasis to the peritoneum. This is stage 3a, just by microscope, not by uh, macro, yeah, microscopic, not by vision. Stage 3b, when the abdominal implant, vision by eyes, but two centimeter and less in diameter, very small implants in the abdominal wall and the peritoneum. This is called stage 3b. Stage 3C, abdominal implant large, more than 2 cm, or positive retroperitoneal lymph nodes, or positive inguinal lymph nodes. This is stage, uh, stage 3C. When we open the bilaprotomy, we see the gross, gross pelvic tumor, and there will be gross metastasis of the tumor to the peritoneal wall in the abdomen and it is large. I can see if it is two centimeter and less or more than two centimeter and the staging according. Stage four, tumor involving one or both ovaries with distance metastasis, like metastasis to the liver parenchyma or malignant pleural effusion, means metastasis to the lung. This is called distance metastasis, stage four. Liver parenchyma is a stage four. Capsule or periton cover the liver is a stage three, not a stage four. What are the classification of ovarian tumor? We have four classification. If you remember, we, we uh, lack the classification, we يعني had been taken already in the first lecture. We have epithelial ovarian tumor, which is most common ovarian malignancy. About 80% of ovarian malignancy are epithelial. Germ cell tumor, about 10%. Sex cord citromal tumors, about 10%. Metastatic tumor, very rare. Secondary metastatic tumor. The first three are primary ovarian tumor. The last one is secondary ovarian tumor. The first three classification according to their origin, whether the origin from epithelial tissue, the origin from the germ cell, or the origin from sex cord trauma. Epithelial ovarian cancer is very important because it's about 80% of all ovarian malignancy.
we have four types. You remember this picture from the last lecture. This is the origin of epithelial ovarian cancer or tumor. The origin is the celium epithelium that covers the urogenital ridge. The urogenital ridge will develop into tube, uterus, and cervix, into kidney and urinary system. So, we have serous cystadenocarcinoma, which arises from the tube. We have endometrioid cancer arising from the uterus. We have mucinous adenocarcinoma arising from the cervix. And we have clear cell cancer arise from, arise from mesonephroid cells. Brunnery tumor is usually benign. So we have four types of epithelial ovarian cancer. First of all, serous carcinoma or serous cystadenocarcinoma. This is the most common epithelial ovarian cancer, which is about 75% of all epithelial ovarian cancer. Most have both cystic and solid elements. Even by ultrasound, we will see cystic and solid element in the ovarian cyst. So the ultrasound say to us, uh, writing to us, it's complex ovarian mass or tumor. Often bilateral, lined by cuboidal cells secreting thin serous fluid. By histopath, the tumor characterized by concentric ring of calcification. This is called samoma bodies. Those are the samoma bodies. Concentric ring of calcification on the cells. Mucinous cystadenocarcinoma. It is just 10% of epithelial ovarian cancer. Usually multilocular. This is multilocular. Multiple small cysts lined by mucus secreting columnar cell, secreting a mucinous fluid. Usually large size tumor. The mean size of it is about 20 cm and larger. Cedomyxoma peritoni. It's a complication of mucinous cyst. This is a rare complication of mucinous cyst after rupture of the cyst, whether intraoperative or even before the operation. Incidental rupture of the mucinous cyst, whether benign or malignant. Cedomyxone peritone usually borderline malignancy or well-differentiated cancer. Seeding growth that continue to secrete mucin. Usually when there is rupture of mucinous cyst, the seeding of mucinous cells that will continue to secrete mucinous material. This mucinous material will cause matting of the bowel together and sometimes obstruction of the bowel. This is the omentum, cake-like omentum, and this is the bowel filled with mucinous uh, tumor. Number three, endometrioid carcinoma. Resemble endometrial cancer, like adenocarcinoma of the uterus. Cystic, unilocular, and contain turbid brown fluid, like chocolate material, the fluid inside it. Usually good prognosis tumor. The last type is a clear cell carcinoma. This is the least common epithelial ovarian tumor and very poor pro prognosis tumor, fatal tumor, characterized by clear cells similar to renal cancer, often associated with endometriosis and endometrial cancer. We have another type of tumor is borderline epithelial ovarian tumors. اللي حكينا عنه هو epithelial ovarian cancer. هنا عندنا borderline malignancy epithelial uh, ovarian tumor. This is 10% of epithelial ovarian tumor. Cell show. Why called borderline malignancy? Because the uh, cells show malignant changes like nuclear atypia and increasing in its activity. But 
there is no invasion of the trauma or basement membrane of the tissue. So it's called borderline malignancy. There is malignant cell, but no invasion of the basement membrane. So when there is no invasion, it's confirmed to the ovary. No white separate metastasis. Very good the prognosis. Most are cellulose and some of them mucinous and type. What is the clinical feature of epithelial ovarian cancer? Again, an epithelial ovarian cancer is 80% of all ovarian cancer. Most symptoms are non-specific. So 65% of patients present with the stage three and four, unfortunately. The symptoms are unsigned, pelvic and abdominal pain, abdominal swelling and bloating, difficult in eating, irregular vaginal bleeding, fixed mass by abdominal examination, by PV examination, fixed hard irregular adenoxial mass. When we see by PV examination fixed hard irregular mass, less than 20% in young women and more than 50% in postmenopausal women are malignant. So high malignancy in old age women. What about the diagnosis of epithelial ovarian cancer? First of all, tumor markers like CA125 elevated in 80% of epithelial ovarian cancer. This is very common tumor marker for epithelial ovarian cancer. Ultrasound, suspected malignancy are the morphology of the cyst, especially when we see bilateral tumor of the ovary, when see ascites and or mental deposition of the mass. CT scan and MRI for metastasis, chest X-ray also for metastasis. Biopsy is the final diagnosis after surgery, whether to see whether if it's benign or malignant. So the final diagnosis on the biopsy after the surgery. No role for screening of ovarian tumor outside the clinical trial, as we said previously in the beginning of the lecture. What are the tumor markers? لازم إحنا كل إحنا نعرف التيومر ماركرز وكل وحدة اشتدل على شنو التيومر مالتها. The most common tumor marker is CA125, which is most common associated with serious cystadenocarcinoma. As we said, serious cancer is the most common epithelial ovarian cancer of the ovary. CA19, most common with the myosinous ovarian cancer. Beta HCG, can we see it in this germinoma and non gestational polyocarcinoma of the ovary? Alpha fetoprotein, in yolk sac tumor, and in teratoma. Inhibin A and B is a tumor marker of granulosa cell tumor because granulosa cells secrete large amount of inhibin. Estradiol is a tumor marker of Fika cell tumor because the Zika cell secretes estrogen. Management of epithelial ovarian cancer. What's the treatment for epithelial ovarian cancer? First of all, is the surgery. Second, chemotherapy. Sometimes plus minus is the radiotherapy. The most important is surgery followed by chemotherapy. We have many types of surgery. The, ob uh, the objectives of surgery are for diagnosis. First of all, as we said, the histopath is the last diagnosis of ovarian tumor, whether benign or malignancy and the type of malignancy. Very important for staging. مثل ما أخذنا بالستاجينج يعتمد على السرجري. يعتمد على الهستوباث. Pathological. Third and the last aim of our surgery is removal of all visible tumor. لازم أشيل أي شيء أشوفه قبالي related to the tumor. And no any remnant tumor cells behind it, especially more than one centimeter. There must be at least 
less than one centimeter remnant behind us. مرات يكون إنه التيومر سايت uh, مات very dangerous ما أقدر أتحرش به. لازم يكون أقل من واحد سنتيمتر. ليش حتى يكون responsive to the chemotherapy later on after surgery. If it's large, so will be not respond to chemotherapy and the recurrence rate will be very high. The first step of the surgery called the primary surgery. This is the commonest surgery done in the ovarian cancer. What is the primary surgery? The skin incision is usually vertical. Why vertical? To gain access to the upper abdomen. We have two types of uh, incision in the gyne uh, gynecological surgery. Either transverse lower abdominal, this is commonest used for cesarean section, or midline vertical, this is vertical incision. For ovarian cancer, better to do vertical. Why? To, so we can extend up and see the upper abdomen, the diaphragm and the liver and the omentum to see them and if there is any nodules or tumor tissue, we can remove them easily. Second, after we do the incision, then we open the abdominal cavity and we will see the ascites. If the ascites is present, we aspirate the acidic fluid. If there is no ascites, then we will do peritoneal washing with normal saline. And the wash will be taken for cytological examination for any cancer cell or malignant cell. Then we will do total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral sadmingeophorectomy. We will remove the uterus and the cervix. This is called total abdominal hysterectomy. We will remove the tubes and ovaries. This is called bilateral salpingeophorectomy. This part all removed in the cancer of the ovary. Next step, we will do infracolic omentectomy. We will remove the omentum from the transverse colon. All the omentum removed and sent for pathology. Pelvic and paraortic lymph nodes are also removed. This is important, especially in early stage for further surgical staging. Then we are going if there is positive retroperitoneal lymph nodes or paraortic lymph nodes, there will, uh, the stage will be uh, 3C. The liver and diaphragm should be inspected, and if there is any diaphragmatic nodule, should be biopsied and sent for histopathology. This is the primary surgery for any ovarian tumor or malignancy. The second type of surgery called interval debulking surgery. This is performed in advanced ovarian cancer. When, see, when we see stage four ovarian cancer, all the abdomen involved with the tumor and malignancy and metastasis. So the uh, patient must respond to three courses of chemotherapy. We will give the patient three courses of chemotherapy and there must be a response for this chemotherapy. How we can see the patient is response or not? By ultrasound, decreasing the size of metastasis and tumor by and by tumor marker will be decreased. Then, after surgery, the chemotherapy should be resumed after the operation immediately. And after the operation, the chemotherapy resumed. Women with residual disease following primary surgery, second debulking surgery can be done. يعني نسوي primary surgery اللي شرحناها بالسلايد القبلة. After follow-up, there will be residual disease during the follow-up by ultrasound, by CT scan, MRI. There will be residual disease, residual masses or tumors in the pelvic, in the abdomen. Second debulking surgery can be done. ليش نسميها debulking هنا؟ لأنه دائما تصير بالadvanced ovarian tumor. ما راح نقدر نشيله كليته فيسموها debulking. قدر الإمكان نشيل اللي نقدر نشيله. ونعوف أقل شيء أفضل شيء إنه يكون لزان 2 or 1 centimeter behind us. 
to be responsive to chemotherapy. هاي اللي ذلك نسميها debulking surgery. Third type of surgery called second look surgery. Plant laparotomy after the end of chemotherapy to assess the response and resect any residual disease. But with no survival benefit, so not recommended. هاي سبعد ما نسويها. شان قبل يسووها. يعني after laparotomy and the primary surgery and after chemotherapy يرجعون يفتحون بطن المريضة يشوفون if there is any residual disease ويرجعون يشيلوه. شافوا هاي ما منها فائدة بالعكس ال complications زيد بيها. So not recommended. Number four type of surgery called conservative primary surgery. What's the meaning of conservative meaning? Fertility sparing surgery. ما أشيل كل شيء. To uh, to serve the fertility of the female. When the tumor is unilateral and encapsulated, like in stage 1A, what are the indications for conservative surgery? If at the stage 1A, when the tumor is just unilateral in one ovary, the second ovary is healthy, and the capsule is intact, the tumor capsule not rupture, we can do conservative surgery, especially in young women, and nilipara, not complete her family. What's the conservative primary surgery? It includes unilateral salpingoophorectomy. And she best jaha, jaha wahda uterus, jaha wahda ovary and a tube. With omentectomy, with peritoneal biopsy, and endometrial cortage is needed to exclude a synchronous endometrial cancer. The picture hala sweat sparing to the uterus on the other side ovary and the tube, so called fertility sparing surgery. Fertility sparing surgery also performed in borderline epithelial ovarian tumor. If the fertility is an issue, because usually, as we said, borderline malignancy present in as a stage one a tumor. So, cystectomy or ophorectomy adequate in young women, while in old women we can do hysterectomy and bilateral salmonjoophorectomy for borderline malignancy, better for old women. But in young women we can do cystectomy or ophorectomy. Second treatment for epithelial ovarian cancer is chemotherapy. If the patient unfit for surgery or unwilling to have a surgery, primary chemotherapy may be offered. Now we can apply as a primary treatment before the surgery. Chemotherapy so can be given as a primary treatment without surgery or as a juvent treatment following the surgery. Or we can give it for relapse of the disease. After how many years there will be relapse of the disease, we can use uh, chemotherapy for epithelial ovarian cancer. When we use chemotherapy after the surgery or as a primary treatment for stage 2 to stage 4 and possibly stage 1C. So we can use the chemotherapy from stage 1C to stage 4. Stage 1A and 1B, there will be no indication for chemothera chemotherapy. Surgery is just enough. What are the chemotherapies? Combination of carboplatin or cisplatin and paclitaxel are the chemotherapy of cho choice for epithelial ovarian cancer. Most regimes are given as outpatient, three weeks apart for six cycles, not the combination of chemotherapy, and then 21 days uh, rest and for six cycles as soon as possible after the surgery. رأسا بس يطلع لي الهستوباث uh, مالة الأوفريان كانسر uh, Proof this is epithelial ovarian cancer stage 2 and above We will start for uh, chemotherapy After chemotherapy Follow up by CT scan for the abdomen and pelvis And epithelial, mar uh, epithelial tumor marker Which is most commonly CA125 To assess the response to the treatment Continue follow-up of the patient by CA125 for five years. 
Why? To detect the relapse of the disease. During the treatment, we do the follow-up for assessment of the response for the treatment. After uh, that, we will do follow-up for five years to assess the relapse of the disease. What about the radiotherapy? Intraperitoneal radioisotopes. We can use intraperitoneal radioisotopes like radioactive gold or radioactive phosphorus, which recognizes an antigen found on most ovarian cancers. This is still experimental. External beam irradiation, it's query about it. No benefit of using external beam irradiation for treatment of ovarian cancer. Survival of epithelial ovarian cancer. What are the prognostic factors? Most important prognostic factor is the staging of the disease. Stage one is very good prognosis than stage three or four. Second prognosis factor is the residual volume post-surgery. What's the volume of the tumor left behind the primary surgery inside the abdomen or pelvis? Histological type and grade of the tumor is very important. What's the type of ovarian tumor and what's its grading? Well differentiated, medium or poor differentiated tumor. The age at presentation also also very important. Overall, five years survival is 90% for stage one and 30% for stage three. 90% for borderline malignancy because borderline malignancy is as stage one ovarian tumor. Non-epithelial ovarian tumors. Non-epithelium like malignant six cord stromal tumors. Granulosa cell tumor is 70% of this type of tumor. Sertolylidic tumor is very rare and may, may produce androgen so the sign and symptom of it is sterilization, and it has a good prognosis. Usually, both of them are low malignant potential with good prognosis, both of them, granulose cell tumor and uh, sertolylidic cell tumor, both of them are good prognosis and of low malignancy, the sex cord tumor. Granulose cell tumors produce steroid hormone, especially estrogen. So, according to the age presentation, cause precocious puberty in case of juvenile granulosa cell tumors, may cause abnormal menstrual bleeding if it happened in reproductive age, and causes postmenopausal bleeding if it occurred in old age women. The peak incidence is around the menopause. Usually, uh, the granulosa cell tumor happen in the menopause. The staging is the same as for epithelial ovarian cancer, and most of them are stage one, so-called good prognosis. Inhibin used for follow-up of the granulosa cell tumor as a tumor marker for the recurrence. The cut surface, uh, surface of them are yellow, yellow. Why? Because they are secreting steroid hormone. Treatment of granulosa cell tumor is unilateral or ophorectomy for young women, total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral salvage of for old women. The effect of adjuvant chemotherapy is difficult to assess. Granulosa cell tumor is chemo resistant, not sensitive to chemotherapy, so no benefit so much from the chemotherapy. Granulosa cell tumor can recur many years later. So long-term follow-up is recommended. Nahtaj high follow-up by tumor marker inhibition and ultrasound for long period of time, for many years. Surgery for recurrent is the treatment of choice. Why? Because no effective chemotherapy regime for granulosa cell tumor. In the start of the recurrence, the treatment is surgery also not like the epithelial ovarian cancer. Malignant germ cell tumors occur mainly in young women, this type of tumor. 
This is 10% of all ovarian cancer. And 70% of them are stage 1, also good prognosis, germ cell tumor. First of all, we have this germinoma. Most of germ cell tumor in the ovary are malignancy, and most of them are good prognosis. We have this germinoma, 2 to 5% of all ovarian cancer, and 50% of germ cell cancer occur in young women, 20% bilateral. Most of them are stage 1, usually solid tumor. Most of germ cell tumors are solid. The mean diameter is large, about 15 cm. Occasionally secrete beta-HCG, so the tumor marker of this germinoma is beta-HCG, like choriocarcinoma. Second uh, cancer, germ cell, can uh, germ cell cancer, is yolk sac tumor, 15% of germ cell cancer. Alpha fetoprotein is the tumor marker of yolk sac tumor. It's aggressive, aggressive tumor. Who will hide in germ cell tumor is very aggressive. A tumor. Immature teratoma is 15% of malignant germ cell tumor and 1% of all teratomas of the ovary. All are unilateral and one third of them secrete alpha beta protein. Some of them secrete secrete alpha beta protein. Non-gestational choriocarcinoma, this is very, very rare tumor, present usually in young female with irregular vaginal bleeding and high beta-HCG level. We are pregnancy, we are abortion, we are choriocarcinoma. Here, when we the ultrasound, we can see a small tumor in the ovary, solid tumor. This is called non-gestational choriocarcinoma, which is very rare. The presentation of germ cell tumor, usually young women with large solid ovarian mass, may present as acute abdomen because torsion or hemorrhage. Tumor marker, MRI, and CT scan are all of them helpful. Chest X-ray also helpful to exclude pulmonary metastasis of the disease. Treatment of germ cell cancer, usually by fertility preserving surgery. Why? Because most of the patients are within reproductive age, young age women. Explorative laparotomy, remove the tumor, assess contralateral ovary and peritoneal biopsies. This is the surgery. When we do laparotomy, we do, uh, do ophorectomy or cystectomy, removal of the tumor by cystectomy or salvage ophorectomy unilateral. Assess the other side of, uh, of the ovary must be normal. And then do peritoneal washing and aspiration and peritoneal biopsy for any metastasis. Post-operative chemotherapy depends on the stage of the disease. Why? Because stage 1, this, germ uh, this germinoma and low-grade teratoma are treated by surgery alone. No need for extra chemotherapy while the remainder required chemotherapy after surgery. Cisplatin, pleomycin, and etoposide for three to four courses and also three weeks apart is the treatment of choice. This regime gives long-term cure of 90% and also preserve the fertility of the female. Why? Because it, most of them are good prognosis malignancy. Number four, or the last type of ovarian cancer, is secondary metastasis, metastasis ovarian cancer. Eight to 10% from GI tract, breast, uterus, and the tubes. This is called Krukenberg tumor. The, the Krukenberg tumor, the primary source, most of them, is its stomach, then colon, or breast. By histopath, the tumor contains characteristic cell called synet ring cells. Synet ring cells is cell filled with the mucin uh, seen by histopath under the microscope like this picture. This is like synet ring. 
ليش؟ لأنه هو this is so swelled swelled by mucin material. This is the nucleus and this is the cell swelling by mucinous material secreted from the cell. Usually, the Krokenberg tumor is bilateral and solid. Ovarian tumor in pregnancy. Ovarian cyst is usually discovered incidentally at antenatal clinic or during cesarean section because no sign and symptom. Indication of conservative management. شو وقت أسوي المريضة conservative management؟ ما تحتاج. Just follow up. If the cyst below 10 cm. If it is simple by ultrasound. If it is asymptomatic, no acute abdominal, no severe abdominal pain. So follow up just by ultrasound only. If the cyst persists six weeks after delivery, surgery may undertaken then. راح نسوي لها هم after delivery for follow up by ultrasound. If persists for more than six weeks, the surgery may indicated according to the type of the cyst and the size of the cyst. What about the indications of surgery? Which woman needs, uh, which uh, which woman need indicate يعني surgery during pregnancy for ovarian cyst or ovarian tumor? If the patient present with acute abdomen because of torsion or hemorrhage, so the surgery will be done regardless of the stage of pregnancy. The operation should be covered by tocolytic drugs. Why? Because the surgery will cause contraction. The complication of the surgery is the preterm labor or abortion because of uterine contraction. So the surgery better to be covered with tocolytic drugs, especially progesterone treatment for relaxation of the uterus. So when there is acute abdomen, we will do straightforward surgery regardless the age of the fetus. The other indication of surgery is the complex cyst and increasing in size. يعني من أشوف complex cyst and increasing in size during the follow-up ultrasound scan, this another indication to do surgery even during the pregnancy. If asymptomatic patient, it's prudent to wait until after 14 weeks gestation. إذا البيشن كانت إذا البيشن pregnant كانت asymptomatic. هي تحتاج سرجري لكن اسمتوماتيك يفضل انه اجلها after first trimester why to avoid the removing of corpus luteum cyst upon which the pregnancy is still dependent لانه بال first trimester دائما السيست هو يكون corpus luteum cyst فاذا شلته راح تصير abortion عند الفيمل ليش لان هذا الكوربس لوتيوم the fetus depend on it and uh, in, in its development so better to do in the second trimester. The surgery for ovarian tumor, the best time for it is second trimester. Why? Because in the first trimester, it may be corpus luteum cyst, and removal will cause abortion. In the third trimester, the uterus will be very large, and the access to the ovary is very difficult. So we will need a large abdominal incision and high manipulation of the uterus and the abdominal organs to access the ovarian cyst. Ovarian cancer with the pregnancy is uncommon, less than 3% of ovarian cysts. Suggestive cysts are one that is growing during follow-up, should be removed surgically. CA125 not useful in pregnancy. Why? Because it is physiologically elevated in the pregnancy. Ovarian cancer managed by cesarean hysterectomy, bilateral sadenjophorectomy, and omentectomy. إذا إحنا proved this is ovarian cancer فش راح أسوي هالpatient بالثير trimester أش أسوي cesarean hysterectomy bilateral sarcoma and removal of the omentum. Thank you so much for your listening.